You know, I was wrong about the Nintendo Switch when it first released. The console portable hybrid is sitting pretty right about now. Enjoy much success in the sales department and just a lot of people getting behind the console and just buying games for it just because they can take it on the go with them. I mean, sure, is the Switch underpowered? Yes. Does it have questionable online functions? Yes. Are its accessories, like if you wanted to buy a new Joy-Con, a bit too expensive? Yes. Do the games on Switch? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Who are you people and why did you suddenly appear on my screen? We're the Switch gang, and we don't take kindly to Switch slander around these parts. Boy. Did, did you just call me boy? And I was getting to a point, so if you don't mind, oh, we do mind. Get him, boys. We're going to teach you to talk trash about the Switch, boy. Okay, I'm going to need you to stop calling me boy. I'll say it as many times as I like, boy. Alright, I was going to take it easy on you guys, but you're all going to get this work. Well, that was easy. Now to get back to the video. Is this going to be a regular thing on the channel from now on? Eh, I don't know. Maybe. We'll see how I feel and what if I feel like doing it, I guess. I don't know. Wait, did I just answer myself? Anyway, before I was so rudely interrupted... Despite the Switch's shortcomings, this console might actually be the perfect place to play JRPGs. JRPGs are long games by nature, ranging anywhere from 40 to 60 hours on average. Having access to play a JRPG at any time is a pretty big advantage. You don't have to worry about playing it only on your TV or monitor. You can pick up the Switch and play it anywhere and not lose any progress. And you have a pretty decent battery life to boot. Recently I was on a small vacation and I had had some down time, so I pulled out the Switch. To my surprise, I had Valkyria Chronicles 4 ready to play. I was honestly shocked. To be able to play Valkyria Chronicles so far away from my home base was completely, I guess you could say, liberating. I mean, this may have been the same case when I was gaming on the Vita, but to have a console game on a go with you in the palm of your hands is something special. Actually, it was something that Sony and the Vita advertised, but that didn't really come through full circle. Still a good portable device anyway. Now, normally when I was on the Vita, I didn't really progress the story on any JRPG I would play when I was out and about. What I would really do is do a couple of battles for experience or farm some items that I may have needed. While this worked out great on the Vita, it works out just as well on the Switch. It may have been about some months ago that I was making fun of the fact that everybody was praising the Switch for its portability, but now with all that hype, I could possibly see the possibilities behind the Switch's portability, I suppose. It's nice to not only be able to play a game outside, but just to be able to play it in the comfort of your bed. Sometimes when I wake up, I just grab the Switch real quick and get through a dungeon in a JRPG easily. This was especially the case in Octopath Traveler, a game I thought was perfect for the Switch with its bite-sized story quests and dungeons. Now while I said earlier that seeing Valkyria Chronicles on the Switch was a nice little surprise, it did come at a cost somewhat. And that's when the Switch's power come into question. Valkyria Chronicles on Switch dipped in frame rate whenever the screen got a little bit too busy, and this just wasn't reserved to the fact that there was a lot of action happening on screen at once. Now the frame rate dips is something that I could probably learn to look past given the advantage of having the Switch anywhere, but I'm too much of a graphical junkie to see this happen on my game in the current year of gaming. So I'm still resolved to play most of my JRPGs on PC or PS4, but I honestly 
honestly wouldn't mind getting it for the Switch, provided it had cross progression or cross save. I know Sony doesn't like to play ball with that nowadays, but cross save between PC and Switch would be nice. Now there's also Xenoblade Chronicles 2, which had some resolution and frame rate problems if you played it on the Switch undocked. But it wasn't like it was a long term problem. If you just gave the Switch some time after you undocked it to adjust, the game would play just fine. It's not like the frame rate drops persist as you played the game undocked. Yeah, sure, you had some texture pop in and what was apparent when you fast travel, but it wasn't that big of a deal. And besides those games, JRPGs as a whole aren't that graphically intensive to begin with. Save for Final Fantasy XV and maybe even Dragon Quest XI. Those are the only two prime examples of JRPGs that are really graphically impressive. So as more time passes, developers will know how the Switch works and will better optimize their games for it leading to JRPGs on the Switch that will run as smooth as if it was on any other platform. You know, besides the PC, because the PC is just, you know, a different beast altogether. So at the end of the day, I think I would love to play JRPGs more on the Switch. It seems like a match made in heaven. But if only JRPGs had cross-save or cross-possession between all platforms, that would be great. But I guess that would cost too much for a developer to keep a server up for just saves. I don't know, I'm not sure, but I know I would definitely start double dipping on JRPGs if they came out on the Switch and they had cross save. So that's all I have for this video. Let me know in the comments section what you thought about all of this video, including that little skit I had towards the beginning. I would really like to get some feedback on that. And let me know just your thoughts on everything. Hit that like button if you enjoyed this video, and of course subscribe if you are new to the channel, and I will see you guys next time. Peace.